everybody. I'm just going to give you guys a couple of minutes to get on. I didn't have a lot of questions submitted in advance today. So if you have questions, please feel free to start putting them in the Q&A box or the chat. Let me see if I can turn on the chat here for everyone. Okay, so you should be able to send me questions in the chat or put them in the Q&A box. And I'm going to pull up the ones that have been submitted already. I haven't turned on the camera yet, guys, but I will in just one second. Hopefully I can do it. Yes, I see there are a lot of people who submitted questions at the last minute because I had my assistant prepare the questions this afternoon and she said, oh, there are only two people, but they're very clearly. And of course, I cannot edit this document. I see your question, Erin. All right. Hello and welcome to the April 2023 Move to France q and I'm Alison grant Lunas. I am the owner of the relocation agency, Your France Formation, and we help people to get the right visa to create their dream life in France. I am the author of Foolproof French Visas. The new edition was released on Tuesday, and this is my galley that came on Friday, and it's very exciting, and I'm going to talk to you about it. And I'm also the admin of the Facebook Facebook group Americans in France that has 17,000 members. So we talk all about the issues and questions that people have when they have been living in France a long time or are moving to France. So today's Q&A is your opportunity to ask me any questions you want about living in France, about French visas, about any questions related to being in France. I do want to talk before we get started about the brand new edition of Foolproof French Visas. It is 462 pages long, which in terms of page numbers is a little bit shorter than last year, but it's 7,000 words longer. And we did that because we made the font a little bit smaller in some of our annexes. And overall, we made the margins a little bit smaller. Last year, we had a lot of white space. It's amazing. Kim, my colleague, did a really wonderful job helping me with all of the updates and the fact checking. And we have gone into all the nuances of the work visas and the work authorizations that you need and the minimum salary and all of the numbers have been updated and it should be really clear. We also added in the back a couple of new things. We have we have a glossary of common terms, acronyms, and initialisms that was in there last year, but we've updated that and added more things as we go. We have also added a document, an appendix with the list of documents that you will need for the different types of visa applications. So it explains what, what everything is. So if you're reading, for example, the chapter on an entrepreneurship visa, there are a couple different ones and you need to know like, oh, well, what's a bilan? You can look in the annex and find out what a bilan is. And if it says you need to, you need CERFA form 15616 then you can look in the annex and see what that is and what you have to fill out and where to find it and what type of visa you need it for and all of that. So I am so, so proud. This is the best edition of Foolproof French Visas yet. I also love the cover and think that it is absolutely gorgeous. I'm going to give you the link in the chat. If you have not yet purchased it and you need help with visa questions, you want to get it. If you have already purchased or read it, I would love if you would go on and write a review about it because we don't have any reviews on the new edition yet. And of course, having a review or having multiple reviews is going to mean that more people get to discover it. And so I'm going to put this in the chat for you right here. So if you have purchased and read any edition of Foolproof French Visas and it's helped you to get a visa, please go ahead and review. If you have not yet, read this and you need help with visas, it is now available and it is very, very good. And I don't think there's anybody in the world now who knows more about French visas than Kim and I. So that's one thing. The other thing that is very exciting that we have released is our French visa quiz. And so this is actually based on the Foolproof French Visas book, and you can answer questions about your family situation, your work situation, your income level, the type, the the amount of time you want to spend in France, the type of work that you want to do, and it will tell you exactly what visa you need to apply for. So I'm going to give you the link to that as well. It's free. There's a little video on your visa type when you get to the end, and it tells you exactly what, what visa type you should apply for. And then, of course, the instructions for applying for that visa are in for French visas. Yes, so the book is available on Amazon as a paperback. It's also available through our website as an ebook. Now, the ebook version comes in a PDF, an EPUB, and a Mobi file. So if you have an e reader, 
you can put it on your e-reader in one of those file types and you also just have the pdf so that you can open it on your computer and and read it so if you buy it through our website it's only the pdf it's only the the digital files if you purchase it through Amazon, you get the paperback version. And then if you purchase it through Amazon and you want access to the digital files as well, all you have to do is leave a review and then send me an email with your receipt and your review. And we'll give you access to the digital files for free so that when we release the 2024 edition next year, you will get an up, up, update. We may issue an update later this year. There is an immigration law that is pending in the Senate and it was supposed to be debated starting last week, but because of all the retirement reform shenanigans, it has not been, um, it has been pushed back. So there are a couple of provisions. We wrote about them in full proof French visas. The main ones are they're debating whether or not to condition multi-year on passing a language test. So right now, all you have to do is if you sign a, a contre for being welcomed in France, you can theoretically get a multi-year cut to séjour after your first year. But in order to do that, you have to take a language test with OPI or you need to pass an A1 level. Now, if you take the language classes that they provide, you don't actually have to pass them in order to get your multi-year card, but they want to make it so that you actually have to pass A1 French in order to get a multi-year card. The other things that are potentially pending are there There may be two new visa types. One would be, um, which is for salaried employees in certain fields that are lacking workers. So this could be things like hospitality and the restaurant industry. There could be a special visa type for those certain areas. There could also be a visa type port talent for medical professions. And part of the reason for that is they want to make it easier for foreign medical professionals to have their credentials validated and accepted in France so that like doctors or, or nurses or pharmacists from the U.S. and other countries that have similarly rigorous medical school programs could theoretically practice medicine in France, which right now is very difficult. The other thing is that for foreign professionals who or foreign students who come to France and go through medical school and who pass the exams, Currently, the studies are not high enough in the medical profession to qualify for one of the other talent passport visa types. And so what that means, it, it can be difficult for those medical professionals to then stay in France. And obviously, there's a shortage of medical workers here. So it's possible that this would enable foreign students to study medicine in France and to have an easier time staying and establishing themselves here. Okay, so... I'm going to start with the questions that were submitted in advance, but you are free to put questions either in the chat box or the Q&A box. I might not have a full hour today, but we'll see how things go. All right. So Rita asked, I would like to have a transportation company in Paris. What is the easiest way to apply for the visa and how can I hire an expert to help me out? Yes, we can help you to create a visa application for starting a transportation business in Paris. Um, what you want to do is you want to take a look at foolproof French visas and you want to understand the differences between two visa types. So one is called the entrepreneur visa, and that is going to be if you're creating a company that does not require a master's degree or five years of professional experience and does not require a 30,000 euro investment. In that case, you need to put together a business plan and begin the process of setting up the company and you need to have approval from the man de the mo. And that goes through DREETS, which if you look in your handy dandy reference guide here, DREETS is going to be the, I don't know it off the top of my head. And they oversee regional economic activity and they are responsible for approving work contracts for foreigners and for deciding if a particular business is economically viable and can set up in a particular region. So if you have a, a business that falls into the entrepreneur category, you're going to go through DREETS for authorization to set it up. There's also the Passport Talent Entrepreneur. And Passport Talent Entrepreneur is if you're investing 30,000 euros in the startup capital of the company. And if you have either a master's degree or five years of professional experience. Now, it's a similar process. You put together all of the documents for setting up the business. You make the deposit in the social capital of the company through an escrow account. And then you're going to get approval from the Ministry of the Economy and they are going to issue a certificate of viability. So a certificate du caractère. When you get that, then you can apply for your visa 
to enable you to set up this company in France. Now, if you have a, a passport talent entrepreneur, you get four years for a craft store right off the bat. So you don't have to make sure that your company is viable and paying you and profitable within that first year or two. If you get the entrepreneur visa, that does not require 30,000 euros, does not require master's degree or five years of experience. You do need to pay yourself minimum wage in the first year of the company in order to renew your visa. And then you can get a multi-year card. So it really depends on how much you have to invest, how you want to set up, if you have any partners who are also investing to determine what visa type would be best. Do you help with the names of companies for cargo to send belongings? Yes. So the main ones, I mean, the main ones that I recommend are the ones that are recommended on all Facebook groups. There is You Pack We Ship, like You Pack with a K is one of the ones that people recommend a lot and send my bags. Those two tend to be for people who are sending small amounts of stuff and not full containers. Schumacher, I think, is the one that people go with when they're sending a full container of stuff. We have a full list that is in Fast Track to France in our module on moving and international mobility. Fast Track to France is our course that has nine different modules on the nine areas of transformation, which are different topics in the ways that or the areas of your life where you have to do like some research and planning in order to make your move to France a reality. So in our international in our international relocation section, we have recommendations for all the shipping companies that our clients have used and recommended to us in the past. We also have documents on or a module on the documents that you're going to need in order to ensure that your belongings are shipped and not subject to duty. So uh, you're going to generally need to get a certificate of or a change of residence certificate from the French consulate where you live outside of France in order to bring your items duty-free into the country. What is involved in getting a longer stay visa? Hold on, let me pull up this question. Can I transition my long stay visa? So this is someone who has long stay tourist visa, which is not a thing. So a long stay visitor visa would be the visa type that I assume you're talking about. It can be renewed at the end of the first year, unless it's a temporary one. If it says temporary on it, then unfortunately you need to go home and apply for a new visa. If it is long séjour visiteur and you validated it through the NF website, NF is the, if it was validated through that and you did your OFI visit, then you can renew the visa, but you're only going to get one year at a time. One of, excuse you. One of the criteria for getting a multi-year visa and eventually being on a path to naturalization and, re and residency and naturalization is whether or not you sign a document called a claim. Now, this is a contract that was started in about 2007 for certain categories of visa holders. And anybody who is on a family visa a or a work visa or a business visa that is not like anything that's not passport talent and it's not a temporary visa type is going to have to sign this document. And this is, you know, learning about the values of, of the French Republic, learning about how public administration and things work in France. And this is what puts you on a path to residency or naturalization. So if you were on any, any visa type that is not renewable, if you're on a visitor visa, if you're on a student au pair internship visa, if you do a temporary work program, you do not have to sign this. And you're very, you're not going to get a multi-year card basically. So you're considered, you're going to be considered a visitor basically forever, unless you make the choice to try to switch to another visa status. We elaborated on this. This is not something that we covered in, in previous editions of foolproof French visas, but we did put a, we did put a chapter on it here. We talked about, you know, what all of the OFI visits are going to be. If you have to do this, it's a formation, it's a, it's a, basically like France orientation and it's 24 hours. So it's, it's four days of six hours per day that you have to do over the course of your first year in France. And that's what gives you, gives you access to getting a multi-year card. And you have to complete the obligations of your contract to get a multi-year card and to be able to eventually get residency and apply for naturalization. And we didn't really make that distinction clear in previous, in previous editions of Wolper French pieces. All right, Matt. Can you talk a bit about potage salal companies and how they work? So Opel is going to be a company that treats you as an employee, but it's going to invoice your clients on your behalf. So this can be a really great option if it's a company that only has you as an employee in France. And so they don't want to set up a whole 
you know, a whole situation where they're playing, where they're paying. How do I want to say this? If they, if, if a company only has one employee in France, then it would be a convenient solution for them to be able to pay you as an employee and respect their obligations to pay French social charges to, you know, make sure they pay your vacation time, your, you know, and respect all of your rights as an employee working and living in France. And meanwhile, the POC collects the money from your employer outside of France and, or, or your clients and such in France, and then calculates and pays your salary. This can be good if you are self-employed as a student. It's really the only way to be self-employed if you're a student, because you're not allowed to be auto entrepreneur and you're not, and you're not allowed to register a company. So I had a client a few years ago who, while she was a student, had set up a process so that she could invoice as an English teacher. And then they were able to give her a pay slip and they were able to report the number of hours she had. And they were able to make sure that her, her obligations as an employee and being a student were respected and that she was staying within the limits of working under 964 hours per visa year on a student visa and things like that. That would be my recommendation. So basically, you know, if you're using a portal, you're looking at 50% of the money going towards social charges, your vacation, you know, your vacation time and the fees for the portage company. So it's not a cheap solution. It's not a cheap solution, but it is, especially if you only have one, one client or one company that you're working for and you don't want to set up your own company, then it could be an option. If you become an EU citizen via Italy's Jury Sanguinis method, for example, can you get a driver's license in any EU country or do you need to be a resident of that country? In order to exchange a driver's license for a French license, you need to prove that you were a resident of that country or while you were, while you got the license. So it doesn't really matter where your citizenship is for a driver's license. It matters like where you pass the driving test. And if you have Let's say, I don't know, I don't know what the states are that can exchange for an Italian driver's license. I have no idea, but let's just say, you know, Texas is a state that you can change for a French license. So if you change a Texas license to an Italian license, then you can change that Italian license to the French license. New York or California is not a state that you can exchange to a French license. If you change a California license to an Italian license and then try to exchange that California license to a French license, you're very likely to not have your exchange go through. So it matters where you were living when you got the license and what, and if it was an exchange license, it matters like where the original license came from. For the portage salarial, yes, you would still need a visa that gives you the right to work. Um, and this is where it gets a little bit tricky because I have not had anybody personally, I have not worked with a client who has gone on a self-employment visa and then set up with a portage salarial because when you're on portage salarial, your status is as an employee. So I have I have categorized this under something where if you're an EU citizen and you don't need a visa, you could do it. If you are married to a French or EU citizen and you're here on a visa visa, you could do it. If you need a visa in order to get set up in in France, like you could do it on a student visa as I mentioned because then you're you know, you can have the status of employee when you're on a student visa. Otherwise, you're looking at one of the either some, which is a talent passport type, being on a local contract, or potentially an international company transfer type, which is when you're on a contract in your home country, and they are seconding you to France for a certain amount of time, maximum of three years. Those would be options. But I don't know, I could be wrong about this. And if and if I am, then I would love an example so that I can understand better what that person did. I do not know of somebody who has gotten a visa for self-employment who is then set up as possible. So I don't know if you, like if you got a po an entrepreneur profile visa, I don't think you could do it. If you, where a profile allows you to do any type of employment or work, as long as it relates to your overarching artistic project. So if you were an artist or a performer, theoretically you could do profit. I don't have a lot of experience with that type of setup. So you know, I, that would be something I would want to learn more about before recommending a visa to, I think there are better visa options and better and better business options overall. All right, Erin, your questions. Working on the business plan for profile visa application. For the year-over-year -year income productions, if I already have clients, including current U.S. employer, which already has me meeting the income requirement, not really sure what to do with the income projection over the next few years part, because there's not really room for change or growth in income as I won't suddenly have more working hours in my day. 
Yeah, so this is where things get a little tricky and I usually recommend starting a little bit low and increasing even if it's, you know, by 20% or something over time. So one of the things that you need to consider is the French work week is 35 hours. The maximum French work week is 44 hours. Exceptionally, exceptionally, you can go up to 48 hours, but that's really, really exceptional. In your business plan, you want to plan for a 35 hour work week. And when you are self-employed, a 35 hour work week means that you're doing actual billable client work for 25 hours. Maybe. So you want to be modest in your income projections. You know, obviously when you're invoicing, like there are ways to do this so that, you know, you're billing clients for a retainer or something. And, you know, nobody is counting up the number of hours that you're actually working when you work for yourself. But in terms of making sure that you are projecting a reasonable income based on the number of hours that that's kind of the math that you want to do. You want to, you want to do about, you, you want to consider that you have about 25 hours of billable work to the client in your work week. And then the rest of it is going to be invoicing and administration and finding new clients and things like that. And then, yeah, I mean, I like to, I like to just show that it starts out a little bit slow and builds up and builds up to builds up over time. And then you want to make sure too, that if you, if that's what you're showing, if you have a letter from a letter of support from a U.S. employer or from a client or whatever, you don't want a letter of support saying, oh, I'm going to hire so-and-so for 40 hours a week because that's an employment contract. That is a dis that would be considered a disguised employment contract that is not a self-employment situation and that would get your visa rejected. Does that answer your question, Erin? Oh, this is sweet. Just wanted to say thanks for all you do to resource people. Love the book and I'm working through the Business Incubator course. I'm glad that the business incubator is helpful. The business incubator is five, five years old. We are going to redo it this year. Now, all of the information about the business plan stuff is still super good. I'm going to make it even better this year, later in the year. The, the auto entrepreneur stuff just changed at the beginning of the year. So that's part of the impetus for, for redoing the course. And also, I mean, I am five years older and no way more stuff now. So I can put more stuff in there. Still a great resource, but any, yeah, anybody who starts for that is going to get access to the new version when it comes out later this year. And obviously I make sure that, you know, you're, that anybody who joins is aware of everything that is the most current, but because there are some slight changes, but we still have, I think we had five people join in but between February and March, and I haven't really done anything to promote it. And they're still, I mean, people have been getting their visas with it every year since, since I started it. So it's a good resource. Yeah. Erin, I think I'll, I'll take a look at your visa, at your letter when, if you want to send it to me and, and when I review your visa application to make sure that, that it's not too suspicious. I would focus more on if you have some French or European clients, like include more letters from them and focus less on the, on the big U.S. client. Anybody who is in the, in the business incubator at least gets their visa application reviewed by me. So I give you feedback and make sure that there are no bitties you know, nothing that, nothing that shouldn't be in there and that you include all the information you need to get your visa. Okay. Rebecca, um, we have remote jobs for American companies. What is the law in France regarding this type of employment? So if you're working in France, you need to be on a local, either you need to be seconded to France on an international, on an intercompany transfer visa, which means you're, you're employed on the local contract in the U.S. They are registered in France. They have, are, you know, declaring you as employees in France, uh, they can continue paying U.S. social charges under certain conditions, and then they are still obligated to respect French law with with regards to work hours and holidays and vacation time and other and other things. Maximum of three years. You can get the same visa a second time or as many times as you want, but there has to be a six month break in between each time. The only possibility is if you, you can get sponsored to a local contract at the end of the three years. That's the only way to stay. At that point, you would have to meet the criteria for another visa type and sign a, that's one option. Other option is some, which would also be for three years. That's a passport talent. Cap. And for that, you would be on a French local contract. The company would have you in a French or European entity, and they would be paying French social charges on you. That is renewable, but also does not lead to permanent residency in France. You would have to switch to another salaried worker visa at some point 
in order to then be on a path to naturalization. We went really far into the different work authorizations that you would need if a company is sending you to France and foolproof French visas. Now, if your company is not sending you to France, but they are tolerating that you work in France, your main way to do it is going to be to set up your own entity and either be self-employed visa and have them be a client among hopefully several clients because there needs to be a degree of autonomy when you are employed, you know, when, if you're not, if you're considering yourself self-employed, then you need to be a contractor and have a certain degree of autonomy. You can also set up a company and have the company in the U.S. company and then pay you, pay yourself a salary from the U.S. company. Or you can do the option if you can get a visa to go along with that. So if your wife has an EU passport, then you would have a visa or a captive as the spouse of, a, of an EU citizen. You can do any of those options. And the options that you have are all outlined in foolproof French visas. Hold on, let me, let me tell you what they are. There's a whole section on working remotely and how to do it. Your options, if you are the spouse of an EU citizen, the year they can sponsor you to Europe and, you know, have you on a local contract and then you're an employee through the European company. You're, the company can register with the Centre Étrangère and have you as a detached salaried worker in France. You can do the portion. You can register your own French company. It does not have to meet the conditions of being a talent passport level because you won't need to go through the visa process. You can register as an auto entrepreneur and be self-employed. So any of those options are going to work for you if you are if you are the spouse of an EU citizen and you want to work remotely in France. I have a Portuguese passport, which is part of the EU. My wife does not. So she will need to request a cut de séjour for being the spouse of an EU citizen when you arrive in France. So you're going to have to get a long-term address very quickly. And she has to go within 90 days with you and with a certain number of documents. So in order for you to sponsor her to get a cut de séjour, you have to be ex exercising your EU treaty right. So what that means is either you are working earning at least minimum wage in France and you have some kind of work contract or business set up or something to show that you are working and earning money and paying into the French system or and earning at least minimum wage. Minimum wage in France is 1,709 euros per month gross, which works out to 1,353 net per month. If that is not your situation, you need to have the, the net amount times 12 in a joint bank account and you need to have healthcare coverage for both of you. And you're going to need to show these documents along with a bunch of other stuff to request her cut de séjour. Now, the spouse's cut de séjour is going to take a good four to five months and perhaps even a bit longer to come through. So during that time, the spouse is not able to work. She will not be able to register any businesses or work or, you know, register as self-employed or anything until she has a valid cut de séjour. We help with that. We have several clients who are EU citizens and their spouses, and we help with the process. It depends a little bit on the on the prefecture and you know where where you are and what your work situation is as the EU citizen. All right. We the family are eventually going to be pursuing naturalization. Do you recommend mentioning this in our visa application? I don't think it makes a difference. You're on a you'll be on a visa type that puts you on a path to naturalization. So I mean, you could potentially mention that your youngest was born in France and that's great. I don't think you have to mention it. I don't think it helps one way or the other. I usually just say at least like when people are requesting, especially when they're requesting visitor visas, which there are two types, one is not renewable. I make sure that it's very clear in the cover letter, like what, you know, if, if people want a renewable visa type, then that it's very clear that they plan on staying for more than one year. But otherwise, I don't think it really matters. Another thing that we went into, this is kind of relevant to you, Erin, is we we covered a little bit more in depth this time. The procedure of is when you can bring your spouse and your children to live with you in France. Now, this can happen in two different situations. One is like if one person, you know, comes to work in France or like goes, you know, goes to school and then gets a job in France and then, you know, either goes back home and marries somebody or like was already married and comes to France by themselves and then they want to bring their spouse and their children over. There's a procedure to do that very easily and for the spouse and children to get. If you come with your family member and uh, live in France for 18 months, it also gives the, the spouse the right to switch to a visa type. So in your situation, Erin, for example, 
you'll have a provisional visa. That only gives the spouse the right to a visitor visa normally. So the first 18 months, the spouse will have the visitor status. The second year and the second renewal, after 18 months has passed, you can start the process through your local mail to ask for a loop, and that will allow your spouse to change his status to on the basis of the fact that you have been living and working in France, earning at least minimum wage for more than 18 months. And then your spouse will also have the ability to work, will sign a congé and will be on a path to residency and naturalization as well, despite having come as a visitor. So that's another chapter that we put in foolproof French visas this time, where we thoroughly explained, you know, that process and how it can benefit some of our clients who are in that situation. One partner comes with with a work visa type and the other one is the accompanying spouse. All right. I have gotten through all the questions I think that were submitted before. Just check. Yes. So does anybody have any more questions? I would love to ask you again, if you have already read Foolproof French Visas, any addition to go and leave a nice review on the next edition uh, so that it will be discovered by more people that it can help. And if you have not yet read Foolproof French Visas and you need to apply for a visa, I would very highly recommend it because I think it's one of the best things I've ever made aside from like my kid. So I am super proud of it. I think it's a beautiful cover. Best group project I've ever done because Kim was wonderful at helping with all the editing last year and she was even more involved and we worked quite extensively on it together this year. And I think it is a gazillion times better because of the help that I got from her. And ooh, somebody took the visa quiz. I bet that was somebody on this call. It was. And Deborah, you got the same answer twice, which means that's what you should do. Everybody takes the visa quiz twice. It's really funny. They go back and must change some of them. Sometimes they change their answers, but anybody have any more questions? Oh, well, there's another one. I do have to tweak some of the videos because I recorded the videos before we finished foolproof French visas and some of them, I need to change the answer slightly. They're still right, but prepare multiple options that are not fully explored in the two minute video I recorded. But they are fully explored in foolproof French visas. Yeah, the visa quiz, I, I can post that link again. Our online business manager, Shelly, put together this visa quiz. Oh, I could show you what it looks like, what it looked like from behind. This was really funny. I had, to, I had created this visa quiz about four or five years ago, and I did not, I did not keep it up to date. And also, I did not really like the software that it was, that it was created on. And so... I stopped using it and I asked our online business manager, Shelly, to help create the visa quiz in a different platform. And I think she thought it was going to be a project of a couple hours over a few days. And instead it was a project of a couple days over a few months. And I want to show you what it looks like on the inside because it was super fun to create. And I was very impressed that Shelly was able to decipher all of this and make sense out of it for your quiz pleasure because there are 25 different possible answers on the visa quiz. And this is like, this is the beginning of how it started, the different questions and the possible answers. And hold on, let me see if I can do, let me see if I can pull up the, what it eventually looked like. Long story short, Shelly is a genius. If you have a business that needs an online business manager or app, you should hire her, but don't poach her for me because I love her and could not live without her. And this is what it looks like in the end. So each of these yellow square rectangles is a result. And these are all of the different arrows about like, did you complete a master's? And, you know, what kind of work do you want to do? And are you eligible for a job creation visa or a, a business creation visa? Or it was very intense. So that's what it looks like behind the scenes. And it is way better than the official visa wizard on the government page, if I do say so myself. All right. Any more questions? Because I think if not, I'm going to let you go. All right. Well, thank you so much for coming. It was a short and sweet Q&A. The next one is not until May 15th. So May 1st and May 8th are both holidays, public holidays in France. I'm going to be on vacation the week of May 1st. My birthday is that week. May 8th is also a holiday. So next Q&A is Monday, May 15th, same time, same Zoom link. You should get a reminder also. The recording for this will likely, will possibly go out on Wednesday. It depends a little bit. I have to travel to the States on Wednesday for a couple of days. And what else do I want to tell you? 
we are getting to the end of the year. So May 15th, and then one at the beginning of June and July. And then August, we have off from the Q&As. I have off from the Q&As. So please do go check out the new edition of Foolproof French Pizzas, which is wonderful. And if you would like to potentially work with us on your visa application, feel free to send us an email. You know, you can respond to your quiz results. You can email us at welcome to at your transformation dot com. I am on all the platforms and I will look forward to seeing you next month. And thank you. Have a good rest of your day. Bye.